guys. Hope you all had a good holiday. I've got some new tech that I'll be reviewing soon, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out. Today though, I'll be upgrading my painfully slow $3 E52603 with an E52667, and I'll be benchmarking it to see how it fares in 2019. Cooling down this 130 watt behemoth is a Psyche Kabutu 2, the motherboard is an Intel DX79SR. I have 16 gigs of Corsair XMS3 and quad channel at 1600 MHz speed. The graphics card is my recently fixed RX 580 from XFX with 4 gigs of VRAM, though at stock speeds as the VRMs have definitely seen better days. This is all being powered by a Corsair TX750 watt power supply. All games will be run on my 1440x900p monitor, though I'll enable virtual super resolution, which will allow me to run games at 1920x1200p, which is a little higher than native 1080, but this will yield more realistic performance numbers as most of you are probably using 1080p panels. Anyways, let's see how this 6 score from 2012 performs in 2019. After benchmarking this chip, I have to say I'm very impressed and satisfied with the performance. As you probably saw, the 580 paired very well with the Xeon. All of the games had no issues running a solid frame rate at high settings. Focusing back more on the CPU though, while 6 cores and 12 threads is nothing crazy, it's not only greatly improved my experience from not only the E52603, but even my Ryzen 3 2200G, though I'll have to confirm that at some other time. My render times are also really good now. My 45 minute render times for 1080p videos at around 6 or 10 minutes are now slashed to only around like 6 minutes for a 4 minute 1080p video, which is a big improvement. Before I conclude, I should probably touch on a few things. You may have noticed the CPU and GPU are getting pretty toasty. The GPU just needs new thermal paste, but the CPU was struggling for sure. This is mainly due to the lack of proper fan control. 
This motherboard was made at a time when UEFI was in existence with features like fan tuning. Intel technically had a more UEFI style BIOS menu that may or may not have had more functionality, but regardless of all of that, somehow their iteration of a more modern looking UEFI never made it to their X79 boards. I haven't quite gotten the hang of SpeedFan yet, which is a fan control and tuning software, but when I do, temperatures should improve as the cooler I have should have no issue keeping this chip reasonably cool. I'm not expecting anything too cool though as 130 watts generates quite a bit of heat, and as you know, Intel doesn't measure their TDP of CPUs as the same way AMD does. So should you buy an almost 8 year old server CPU? On paper it seems pretty great, x79 quad channel memory has about the same bandwidth of DDR4. DDR3 is pretty cheap, I got my 16 gig kit of Corsair XMS3 for a best offer of $30 on eBay. And you get pretty generous IO as well. But keep in mind a lot has changed since 2011 in the PC world. NVMe storage isn't something that will ever happen on my board or any other official ones for that matter. There's no M.2 slots, and while Chinese boards solve this shortcoming, it's not possible on official boards without maybe a BIOS mod. PCI Express is for its compatible, though I don't think they'll be using a card intended for 4.0. Another thing is, CPUs on this platform are anything but efficient. While V2 Ivy Bridge ships are based on a slightly more efficient 22 nanometer architecture, my board specifically only supports the earlier 32 nanometer Sandy Bridge ones. Regardless, the E52667 consumes a whopping 130 watts, which to give some perspective, AMD's highest tier consumer CPU consumes 105 watts, 9900KS consumes 127 watts. AMD's Ryzen 9 TDP is measured differently than Intel, so the 2667 probably consumes a little more under load. First gen Ryzen 5 and 7 chips can be had for cheap on AliExpress. DDR4 is significantly lower in price, and AM4 motherboards can also be acquired cheaply. With all of this in mind, X79 boards from China can be had for fairly low prices, with modern features and features in general, like NVMe storage, ECC DDR3, V2 CPU support so you can get more efficient and better value chips, and you know how there is a little LED trace separating the audio caps from everything else on your motherboard? I don't want to give it too much credit, but my board doesn't have that, so audio interference is horrible. Don't take something like that for granted, or I guess buy an audio interface that's external. But to conclude, this platform not only can run a 580, but up to a GTX 1080 without any model necking. If you live in an area where the newer stuff is super expensive, I'd still recommend going on AliExpress for Ryzen stuff, but this is also a good option. And of course, higher core counts for cheaper are achievable, which was my goal and I achieved that, as this CPU cost me only $27 shipped, and I paid $100 for my 2200G when it was first released. That's 6 cores and 12 threads at a fairly respectable clock speed, versus 4 cores and 4 threads, which can be overclocked to about 3.9GHz, but this chip still holds its own in 2019. Anyways, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or suggestions, please let me know in the comment section and I'll do my best to get back to you. If you did enjoy the video, hit that like button, but if not, you know where to go. While you're there, consider subscribing to the channel and enable notifications for more quality tech videos. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you later.